on this episode of Design Cut Build. The team was approached to build a kayak rack for an awesome overlander, and we had so much fun, we ended up redesigning the back hatch too. Let's get ready to design, cut, and build. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Design Cut Build and we've got a great build today. So our sales and marketing manager, Jeff Knoll, wants us to build a kayak rack for his Overlander vehicle. I want to be able to slide the kayaks in here because this is getting a rooftop tent. This slides, so it needs to be able to slide oh, yeah. under the rack and that's the idea of the principle there. Simple enough, right? Jeff had brought us a beautiful prototype drawing. All we had to do was build it. But Iggy and I are ambitious dudes, and when we saw the condition of the back hatch, we had to do something about it. This is definitely, it's, it's all busted up. Busted up. No security left. Plus, this is a point of leverage for him to push, so maybe okay. we can beef it up, too. We can probably put some sort of, uh, you know, gusseting in here. It's kind of make it a little bit more robust, and maybe eight inch, maybe the tack welded on there after that. I can, I can do right. on this while you guys are working on that uh, kayak rack, no problem. Cool, thanks, my man. All right. All right, let's do it. There you go, not one but two projects, the second one's a surprise. Plus, we get to work on one of those awesome overland vehicles. I love my job. So Iggy starts drawing up a design for the back hatch and I team up with Chad Spradlin, the head trainer here at Torchmate, to take Jeff's drawing and make it a reality. Chad uses the scan and trace function in Torchmate CAD to vectorize the drawing and turn it into a DXF file. Jeff explained to us that his design consisted of four sides that come together and fit like a jigsaw puzzle, as well as a bottom piece that will mount onto the truck. With the file ready to cut, we head to the Torchmate 4400. So, so how do you control, I'm gonna call it slag, but it is called? Dross. 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 Gotta remember that. Right. Most of the time, dross is because of feed rate and setting. So our AVHC settings, which is the pierce height, cut height, pierce delay, and then our feed rate, which is the speed that the torch travels, that is going to directly contribute to more or less dross. Now my goal is, is to hopefully set this thing up to have very little to no dross because my manicured nails can't handle picking <laughs> that off. You and me both. So. <laughs> Understood. This is an evolution, but you can take it basically from CAD into a finished yeah, piece. Absolutely. Yep. And uh, make sure it fits, see how it works, yep. and, and in the see reel. See how we like it. Yep. Yeah. See if it whistles on the roof. Yep, exactly. That would. <laughs> oh, that's a scrapper. <laughs> synchronize these holes and get harmonics. Yeah, right. Ladies and gentlemen, the Torchmate Philharmonic. So with the pieces clamped, it's time to tack weld them together. But right off the bat, I start to notice a few problems. So this material is pretty thin. And it's pulling. When you weld, it's going to pull in a certain direction. Not only that, I can't get into the bottom to weld the bottom. Let me go take this back to the CAD and see if we can make some of those alterations Great. and changes and then we'll cut another one and see how, oh yeah, that's ugly. All right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Mind if I tag along on this one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I wanna, let's go I check it out. I want to learn more CAD. Cool. Wow, that was fast. That looks great. So what I did was is I added a couple tabs at the bottom of oh. the side plates. And then since these parts are symmetrical, I decided to add more tabs the to the top and the bottom. Yep, yeah, correct. Oh and so now when the thing is being tack welded, it's actually forcing against yeah. itself and then it's not going to spread apart. And then also I added that extra opening for awesome. the tip to come in and be able to weld the bottom. Man, that guy is so smart. Honestly, folks, it's not that hard. 
All right, back on the 4400? Yep, back on the 44. So All there right. we go. Oh, great, the truck's here. Sweet. Nice. Hold that thing in, that's gonna be easy. Yeah, just bring it into the just, just room, Park you know. it, whatever. At least it's not on the carpet. <laughs> I dig that truck, I think it's cool. <laughs> Okay, ready? Best cat drawing wins. Go. Let's see what you got. So, uh, you said there's cat training available. That's pretty flat. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we got some Mounties, eh? We cut the other three mounts, welded them up, and sent them to paint. By this time, Iggy is back and starts taking off the old hatch. While Aaron and Chad were whistling away, sorry, working away, I was busy drawing up an awesome design to weld onto the hatch. What better for an overland vehicle than a compass? Iggy, I don't want to distract you too much, but okay. uh, I assume that you're marking the parts that we're going to bend? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Yeah, I don't think that looks too bad. It was here we came up with a pretty neat idea. Jeff's son, Cody, is quite the talented welder, and we thought it'd be really fun to get him involved in the project. My name is Cody Knoll. I have been welding for about four years now. Uh, straight out of high school, went straight to the uh, Lincoln Electric Welding School in Cleveland, Ohio. So I've done uh, anything from working here at Torchmate in the past to building power plants, pipe welding, structural welding, boiler making, working on race cars, and uh, you know, using welding to also continue to put myself through school for a metallurgy program degree. That's pretty cool. It turned out really neat. With the hatch welded together, the next step was to prep the hinge on the truck for welding. Perfect, that gives us an eighth of an inch. Woohoo! I love it when a plan starts to work out. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh, that is gorgeous. So now that Iggy's finished, I better go look busy. So here we have the support braces for the back of that door on the truck, 16 inches long. So I marked them in half at eight, and we're gonna put a 90 degree bend in them. They're 90? Yeah, but yeah. 90 the wrong way. It's supposed to mean? go, you gotta go. Well, we got some shelves. We got, yeah, uh, we can always get some books yeah, on how to break stuff. Shelves like right there. So that just happened. Luckily, Iggy has an easier solution. So, since this is stiff enough, we are going to build those little brackets, except for instead of it being 16 inches long, mm -hmm. we'll just make them two inches. We'll make them two inches. So the easiest way to explain how I fabricated up this uh, locking pin system was I started off with the handle itself. I did this twice, and we had an eighth inch plate with one hole. The eighth inch plate with the hole then bolted to the handle twist part itself and I was able to then weld that eighth inch plate to a three eighths plate that I just cut at three eighths by three eighths. And then on the end of that, I welded a three eighths bar. And that three eighths bar round stock was able to then slip through uh, the locking mechanism on the truck itself. And then I welded another plate here to keep it in line of the actual truck. That way when we twisted and opened it, it opened and closed in the same exact spot. Our new hatch is complete. And nice timing, the kayak rack mounts are back from paint, so let's put them on. I did not know you were there. Hello, Mr. Cyclops. All right, Jeff, so here we are. We got your uh, rack mounts. Look at that. Yeah, they look great. It looks like you had to change up the design a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we had to take a few tries at it here. Uh, for stability, we added more notches here, and uh, then we cut this little, I'm calling it the Black Widow spot, out here so we can get access to weld because uh, they were starting to rattle a little bit. I didn't consider getting in there to weld it. Right? Oh, look at that. It's great. Iggy did a really nice design. 
We didn't know if you know you wanted to paint it or, you know, it's kind of cool. I'm a metal guy. I like leaving stuff raw, but, you know, that's up to you. And we brought in your son to come in here and uh, TIG weld for us. <laughs> oh, that's great. He's really good and a nice kid, so. Well, he ought to be good. He went to a great school. Yeah, that's right, the Lincoln School. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, another one in the can. We designed it, we cut it, we built it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Design Cut Build. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe. Leave a nice comment, give us a thumbs up, and be sure to tell a friend. And if you have an idea that you'd like to share, please visit fabricationforum.com and leave it there. See you next time. To learn more about Lincoln Electric's line of plasma cutting tables, please visit torchmate.com.